On this episode of Mix and Some Magic, I'm talking all about Disneyland in the summer. How crowded will it be? How hot will it be? Is it worth it to visit Disneyland in the summer? I'm answering all those questions and more. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Melissa with Mix and Some Magic. I'm a Disney planning expert and I'm here to mix a little magic into your day. Each week I share Disney vacation planning tips, park strategies, and a little bit of Disney history sprinkled in. Of course, I like to include lots of Disney magic. Join me, let's mix in some magic. Welcome! Thank you so much for being here. How are you? Is it summertime at your house yet? Summer is in full swing at my house. It's only been a few days, but so far it's been really great because I love not having a schedule. Well, I love it for a while. It's going to get old really quickly, but for now, I'm loving it. But I can promise you that I will be thrilled when summer is over and we are back to a regular routine. When you hear this episode, when it drops, then I will be at Universal Studios Hollywood with my family celebrating my son's high school graduation. Super excited about that, and I'm extra excited because the weather is supposed to be so great. We're talking like high 60s. I'm thrilled with that. I was thinking it would be blazing hot, but it's not going to be awful. I'm excited about that. If you're interested in following along, come check it out. I'll be posting all about it all over Instagram so you can follow along if you like. Before I forget, I need your help. I'm putting together an episode of Magical Disney Moments that I am pretty excited about. So have you ever had a Magical Disney Moment? I bet the answer is probably yes. If so, I would love to share it on an upcoming episode. So please email me or DM me on Instagram and tell me all about your magical Disney moment. There are links to both my email and Instagram in the show description, or you can send me a voicemail and tell me all about your experience. There's a link to that in the show notes as well. And thank you so much to those of you who have already sent in your experiences. It's going to be such a great episode. Let's talk about some Disney news. As of this recording, Halloween dates have not been announced yet. We know that they're going to be having Halloween time. They're going to be celebrating Halloween at Disneyland. We just don't know when it will begin, and we don't have any official dates for the Oogie Boogie Bash yet. It's a little frustrating because Disney obviously knows what the dates are, right? I mean, they've probably known for a really long time, so why can't they just tell us? Uh, Walt Disney World got their party dates and their Halloween dates months ago. Last year, they announced Halloween dates at the end of April, and here we are at the end of May, and nothing has been announced yet. Why? Why, Disney? Why? I don't understand it. I just want them to tell us these dates. doesn't make sense to me. My best guess is that Halloween time will begin on September 1st because that would follow along with what they did last year, but we will see. Hopefully soon. Every day, I think, today has to be the day but it's not. We'll see. In other Disney news, Splash Mountain officially closed on May 31st. It will reopen as Tiana's Bayou Adventure, but not until late 2024. I had my very last ride on Splash Mountain a few weeks ago when I was at Disneyland with my girls, and we got stuck at the very, very tippy top and had to be evacuated from the ride. So we were at the point where we were about to go over the edge and then we stopped. I thought it was a great way to say goodbye to the attraction, and one that I'll always remember. I mean, getting evacuated off of Splash Mountain on your very last ride, that's pretty cool. My girls were a little disappointed because they wanted to ride the whole thing, so that was too bad, but I, I'll i always remember my last ride on Splash Mountain for sure. So although it's sad to see it go, I'm really looking forward to Tiana's Bayou Adventure. We also got some Pixar Place Hotel updates. Disney's Paradise Pier Hotel is being updated and transformed into Pixar Pier Hotel. Now, the main lobby and reception desk 
are now open. So guests had been checking in through the ballroom while they were doing refurbishments, but now they're open and they're looking great. They've got some new Pixar art and more art and decorations will be added later, but it's fun to see it moving forward. There's a lot of work happening along Pacific Wharf as they're transforming it into San Francisco. San Francisco is from the movie Big Hero 6, and it's the inspiration for the area. And soon you'll be able to meet Baymax there, which will be pretty cool. This past week, the live-action Little Mermaid was released in theaters, and I haven't seen it yet, but I'm excited to. I'll have to wait till after my Universal Studios trip. Disneyland celebrated the release of the movie with a little meet and greet with Ariel and a cute new backdrop near It's a Small World, so that's pretty fun. If you happen to be visiting Disneyland in June, then let's chat real quick about what you can expect. So Disneyland 100 Celebration or the Disney 100 Celebration is going strong right now. You can expect that. And supposedly it's going to last the whole year. We don't have an end date yet, but they told us a while ago it was a year-long celebration. So I'm expecting it to be around through the end of the year. We also have a Disneyland After Dark Pride Night happening June 13th and June 15th. So Disneyland will be closing earlier on that night. Those nights, I mean. Grad nights are happening June 2nd, 4th, 7th, 9th, 14th, and 16th. So California Adventure will be closing early on those nights. Matterhorn is closed, but will reopen on June 2nd. Little Mermaid closes June 5th, reopens June 8th. Alice in Wonderland closes June 5th, along with Peter Pan and Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Alice and Mr. Toad will open on June 16th, and Peter Pan will open back up on June 30th. Now they're all closing at the same time because they're all in the same building. So whatever refurbishments they are doing, it's all happening right. I mean, they have to close all of them to make it work, whatever they're doing. Also, I already talked about it, but Splash Mountain will be closed and Tarzan, Tarzan, Tarzan's, just a weird emphasis on that syllable. Tarzan's Treehouse is closed for retheming, and we don't know when it reopens. To be determined, sure has been closed for a long time, but we haven't heard anything yet. Now, you may have heard a rumor that they are changing Peter Pan into an up attraction. This is just lies, a complete rumor. I have had so many people send me messages on Instagram saying, I'm so sad about this. They'll send me the video where they say this is happening. And it's, it's just all lies. There's this Instagram account called Mousetrap. And on their Instagram, it says, we post 100% fake Disney news. So all they do is post fake things. And they gain followers because people don't realize that it's fake and then they get upset. They're like, how could they be changing Peter Pan? This is so awful. And and then they follow along. And so they're, they're getting followers by posting fake things. And it's really kind of frustrating because then I have to go along and take all this time to explain to people that it's fake. So if you see a video that seems a little shocking and surprising, like... Uh, I've seen one where they talk about how It's a Small World is turning into a walkthrough attraction or Disney parks are going to a cash-only system. If you see something like that and you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense, look at who posted it. If it says mouse trap, then it's a trap. It's fake, and you will know it's 100% fake. So just a little heads up about them. If you haven't heard, then my friend Chantel and I are posting hosting. We are hosting a little mini event at Disneyland on Disneyland's birthday, July 17th, and we're pretty excited about it. So just today I did an Instagram live with her that I want to play for you so that you can get all the details about this fun event, and I really hope you'll be able to join me. So let's listen in on that Instagram live so you can get all the details. Chantel! Hey! Are you just laying by the pool? I'm just, just laying by the pool. <laughs> yeah. 
I, you know, vacation is not over yet. It's not over till it's over, right? You're soaking every last minute. I am. <laughs> oh, oh honey. Tomorrow well, I go back to real life. So sad. <laughs> well, enjoy, because I'm in real life right now. <laughs> so enjoy. Oh, well, we're doing an event in July, a little mini event. I'm so yes. excited about it. Yes. Can't wait. So should we tell, why don't you tell them what, how we decided to do this? Okay. This was kind of your idea. So, yeah. So we've talked about this before, but for years, I have always wanted to go to Disneyland on their birthday, which is July 17th, but it's always so stinking hot and I can never get my family to go because they're like, no, the rides are too long. The lines are too long. I don't want to go. It's hot. And I'm kind of feel the same way. But I'm bound and determined to do this challenge that I thought of years ago, where you ride all of the attractions that were open on opening day and call it something like the ride challenge. I don't know, something about opening day ride challenge. And you do all the same attractions that were open on the first day. And then, I don't know, you just have fun and be there on the birthday and enjoy what would have been the first day of Disneyland open. Yeah. I love it. It sounds so fun because, I mean, we weren't there back in 1955, but it's kind of like the closest we'll ever get to <laughs> being there. Yes. So we decided to do it this year. I've never been there on Disneyland's birthday before either. So we decided this is our year. It's going to be hot. It's going to be crowded. We don't care. It's going to be fun. Yeah. We decided it would be more fun with friends if we invited other people to join in with us and do it with us. So we're going to do a mini event. Is that what we're calling it? A mini event. Yeah. Come, come join in the fun and do all the rides. And we've created a list. So we have been very diligent. Look at our list. Oh, we've let's, been very let's talk diligent. about the title. Oh, yes. Back in time to Disneyland's prime. I love How does that it. sound? I love it because I wanted something that rhymed and Chantel was like, I don't think it has to rhyme, but she was so nice and sat on my couch with me and brainstormed for like way too long so we could have a title that rhymed. <laughs> I'm so happy about it. I'm so Okay, happy. so here's basically what the mini event will be is we are going to be there on July 17th, which is a Monday this year, and we are going to have this printable. And anyone who wants to join in the fun, just come and you can either, we'll have the printable able to be able to download it beforehand, or you can get a personal copy from us. We will do like a meeting spot in the morning. And then you're free to be with your family, your friends, or whoever, and do all the opening day attractions with whoever. And then throughout the day, let us know how you're doing, tag us, tell us, we're going to be doing the rides as well. And then in the evening what are we gonna do i'm so excited so in the evening once it's cooled down it's not hot anymore we're gonna have a meeting place and anyone who did all the attractions the opening day attractions and really there's not that many of them it's not gonna this isn't a hard challenge anyone who did all of these attractions can meet us well even if you didn't do the all the attractions you could still come for that but if you did all the attractions then you were going to give you a raffle ticket We'll put it in a little drawing, and then we're going to have some really fun prizes. So we'll draw for prizes. So anyone who did the whole challenge has a chance to win a prize. And then we thought it would be fun to go watch fireworks together. Whoever's there, probably yeah. over by Small World, because it won't be super crowded. Do you think? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. We can go watch fireworks together, and then maybe we should, like, go on a ride or something together. Yeah, Just that would be so fun. You just set, you know, you get to know some other people. But basically the idea is that those of you who want to join in the spirit of the original Disneyland day and ride the attractions and do them and then meet up and get some prizes, that's what we're doing. Yep. Celebrating Disneyland's birthday. It's totally free too. This isn't, we're not charging people for this. It's just free. It's fun. And if you're going to be there on July 17th, then come and join us. We're, it's not going to suck up your whole day. You could easily still have your fun family day at Disneyland. Or, I mean, you can come with friends. You can come alone. But if you are if you don't have a trip planned for the summer and you're looking for an excuse, then this right. might be your excuse. Yeah. Yes. 
Yes. And come meet us. And we want to just, I feel like the more the merrier. Yeah. It'll be fun. It'll be fun to meet people and hang out. And Chantel and I, I've already been talking about some prizes. And I'm so excited. We won't say anything yet, but I'm excited about some of the prizes. Yes. And I think it'll be fun. I think people will kind of get into the, um, I like the history of Disney. So probably throughout the day in my stories, I will share just some tidbits and facts about opening day um, because I love that kind of stuff. And then um, that night we can talk, you know, I mean, does anybody have somebody who was there on opening day? Does anybody know anybody? You know, that might be fun. That anyway, fun. so we'll add some trivia in there and just make it a really fun day. And I know that day they also have a special cavalcade for Disneyland's birthday. So, so probably maybe we could meet up and watch that together too. That would be fun. Yeah. yeah. And they'll probably have some yummy treats. Maybe there'll be a birthday cake. Yes. You know, yes. I love cake. Mm. <laughs> I need to get that. <laughs> so can you make, we, Melissa and I have already made our reservations for July 17th. So if you want to come and join us, get your reservation for Disneyland. We're going to be in Disneyland all day that day. Mm -hmm. Um, and make your reservation now for Monday, July 17th. It'll be Disneyland's, what, 60, I don't know, what do the math. They opened in 55, we're in 23, 68, maybe. Eight. <laughs> Sounds good, I have no idea. <laughs> yes. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Anyway, if I'm not wrong, sorry. I, <laughs> I did the math in my head. <laughs> Well, it's so. going to be fun and I can't wait. We'll share more details as it gets closer when we decide like where we're meeting up and things like that. But we just want to give everyone a heads up in case you want to come and join us. It's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. So yes, just a fun little meetup and prizes in the end. Yep. Can't wait. All right. Okay. So make those reservations. <laughs> And then we'll talk more about it as it comes. But we wanted you guys to know now, like summer's like approaching and uh, reservations are going to get filled up. So yep. make your reservations and uh, we'll give out more details as we get closer. But hey, now you know a reason to come and just have a fun day at Disneyland. Yep. It's going to be great. Okay. Well, you enjoy your last few hours of vacation yeah yeah the pool i don't know it's been just an awesome trip but i'm ready to go home so <laughs> awesome thanks for doing this with me and we'll get more <laughs> information out as it gets closer hey and hopefully everyone can join us so fun all right we'll talk to you all later. right okay bye. see ya bye i am so excited for this event I think it's going to be amazing. And I have a special exclusive summer travel deal for you. So if you want to come to this event, or maybe you're just planning a trip to Disneyland this summer, you can take advantage of this deal. If you use my code BDAY17, you can get an additional $17 off packages through my partners at Getaway Today. So it's good for a two night stay and a two ticket minimum for travel June 1st through August 31st. Now this special code isn't going to last forever. It's only good June 1st through June 7th. So you only have a week to use it. So make sure you take advantage of it because that's just more churro money in your pocket. If you want to save the very most money, and I know that you do, you're going to want to combine this offer with some of Getaway Today's other amazing offers. You can totally stack offers, and that's one of my favorite things about Getaway Today. So right now, they're offering a free day at Disneyland, so you can grab that offer, and then you can get a free day at what, or a free night at one of their hotels. So you combine their free day with one of their hotel deals that's offering a free night, and you're saving a ton of money. They have a bunch of hotels that offer third or fourth night free. It's such a great deal. So you're going to get a free night in a hotel and your free day at Disneyland. And then you're going to top it off with my code BDAY17. And boom, you have just saved yourself a ton of money on your Disneyland vacation. So make sure you stack those deals to save the most money. Now remember that code is only good through June 7th 
and only valid for travel through August 31st. If you're traveling to Disneyland in fall or winter, you can still get the same great deals and still stack those deals for you know, a free day at Disneyland and a free hotel night, but you can use my code MIX10 to save an additional $10 on those packages. Now, I will put a link to Getaway Today in the show notes so you can check them out, or you can call them at 1-855-GETAWAY and just tell them that Mix and Some Magic sent you for the best deals. Let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be talking about visiting Disneyland in the summer. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Mix and Some Magic. If you're visiting Disneyland this summer, you might be feeling a little worried, maybe a little stressed. Heat and crowds are the two biggest concerns that I hear from people visiting Disneyland over the summer. Those are the two things people worry about the most. So let's talk about all of it so that you can be prepared for your summer visit. Or maybe this episode will make you consider a visit to Disneyland in the summer. Maybe you'll decide that it's a great di- great idea and a perfect time for your family to visit. Or it could do the complete opposite and make you decide that you'll never set foot at Disneyland in the summer. I'm just not sure how it's going to go. But information is always a good thing, and I want you to be prepared with as much information as possible. The first question I get asked often is a big one. Is it worth going to Disneyland in the summer? My answer is yes. Although you will run into crowds and it could be hot, you can still have a fantastic time at the Disneyland Resort. So if visiting during the summer is what works for you and your family, then do it. It's going to be great. You can still have a great time. At Disneyland in the summer, you're going to find longer park hours, which is a bonus. They have extra entertainment, special events, and lots of great dining options. The next question I get is, is Disneyland crowded during the summer? Yes, but the good news is you can still have a great time in the parks even when they're crowded. It's actually really tough to find a time when Disneyland isn't crowded these days, so navigating crowds effectively is essential, no matter when you're visiting, but it's especially important if you're visiting over the summer. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. Next question I get is Disneyland hot during the summer? Usually. You can usually expect Disneyland to be pretty hot from June through October. August and September are traditionally the hottest months, so if you're visiting in June, it probably won't be as hot, but if you're visiting in July, August, September, October, it's going to be hot. And although it might be hot during the day, the mornings and the evenings are still really pleasant. And I'll share more t- more tips about staying cool and, you know, how to do Disneyland in the heat in a minute. First, I want to talk about a few tips to help you with your summertime visit. The first one is plan ahead. Planning ahead is crucial to making the most of your Disneyland visit in the summer. By taking a few simple steps before you arrive, you can ensure a smooth and enjoyable experience at Disneyland. So park tickets, you have to purchase your park tickets before you go. That's just how it works with Disneyland these days. You have to have park tickets and a park reservation. Disneyland's a popular destination, especially during the summer. So make sure you purchase your park tickets and make your reservations early so that you don't miss out. I mean, sometimes reservations do book up and you would hate to be not able to make a reservation on the day that you're wanting to visit. So get both park tickets and reservations as soon as possible. I always buy my tickets through my partners at Getaway Today because they have the best deals. There's links in the show notes so you can check them out. Also, you're going to want to book your hotel in advance if possible because like I said, summer is a busy time. The sooner you book your hotel, the more choices you have and that means you have better price options. So the farther in advance you can book your hotel, the better. Getaway Today does price matching. So if for some reason you find a cheaper price somewhere on your hotel, then you can call them and they will match the price. So don't worry about maybe a better deal coming out later on. If you find one, they will match it. So don't stress about that. But 
hotels book up and the cheaper ones book up quicker, the more popular ones book up quicker, and you don't want to be stuck in a hotel that you don't want to be at for your vacation because you didn't plan ahead. So get your hotel early. Another thing that I want to talk about is making dining reservations. Disneyland offers tons and tons of options. They've got tons of quick service options, and I often tell people you don't have to have dining reservations to have a great time at Disneyland. There's so many amazing quick service options. But in the summertime, when it's hot, I like to have a dining reservation kind of mid-afternoon because it's so nice to have a place that's already scheduled where you can go and sit down, be in the air conditioning, and take a break for a meal. A lot of the quick surface options, you're eating outside. I mean, it's all covered, but a lot of them are still outside. The inside dining options are my favorite during the summer. So if I'm visiting in the summer, which I am a few times this year, I've already made some dining reservations because I know it's gonna be hot and I know at about one or two in the afternoon, I'm just gonna wanna sit down and take a break from the heat and having a dining reservation is a great way to do that. So I do recommend dining reservations in the summer if you can get them in the middle of the day. By the evening time, quick service is going to be great. For breakfast, quick service is going to be great. But if you want a break, like a guaranteed break, then a dining reservation is the way to go. You can make dining reservations 60 days in advance. If you need help getting the reservation that you're looking for, if you can't find the one you want, I recommend mouse dining. You tell them the date, the time, the place, and they'll notify you when a dining reservation becomes available. It's a great way to score those hard-to-get dining reservations. Next is get familiar with the Disneyland app. If you don't visit Disneyland often or you've never been, get on the Disneyland app before you go and kind of play around with it. Get familiar with it. You'll be able to see wait times and attractions, what times they open and close because they don't all open and close at the same time. You can check entertainment times, find characters, find bathrooms, mobile order. But if you get familiar with this app a little bit before you arrive, it will really be helpful. Next is choose the right dates. So when planning your visit to Disneyland in the summer, selecting the right dates can significantly enhance your overall experience. By considering the time of your trip, you can take advantage of like several benefits and avoid the crowds that gather during peak period. So it's always crowded during the summer. Some times of the year are more crowded than others and some days are more crowded than others. So we know Disneyland is crowded, that's no secret, and Disneyland in the summer is even more crowded. You can still have a great time, and the least crowded day to visit right now at Disneyland is Sunday. That might surprise you, right? I've been surprised by it too. I track wait times and I'll, you know, do crowd calendars, all kinds of things, but Sunday for the last, I don't know, maybe year has been the least crowded day in the parks. Everyone assumes that weekends will be crazy busy, so they plan their trip for different days. And I think that's the reason that most, I mean, it's just not as crowded because people assume it will be the most crowded and so they don't go. I don't know why. The most crowded days are going to be Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays. So if you can be there on a Sunday, you'll probably have lower crowds. There are a few times, maybe just one particular time actually, that I would avoid in the summer if possible. So summertime's busy, but 4th of July is crazy busy at Disneyland. So if you can avoid the 4th of July, I would avoid the 4th of July. That whole week around 4th of July, it's going to be massive crowds. If you can avoid that time, it's probably for the best. Let's talk about beating the heat. Being prepared for the heat can really make a huge difference at Disneyland during the summer. Hot weather is just part of Disneyland in the summer. California gets really hot, but with a few simple things, you can stay really cool. Well, not really cool. Cooler. How about that? You can stay cooler. So think about what you're wearing. Dress comfortably. Once I wore jeans to Disneyland in, I think it was August, like full jeans. That was not a good choice. 
it was not a good choice at all. Wear like light colored clothing and light weighted clothing. It's more comfortable, 100%. Um, I like to wear breathable options. Jeans are not super breathable. Loose fitting is better for me. I like light colors. The loose fitting and the light colors just kind of allow air to circulate a little better and help you regulate your body temperature. I like to bring a hat or even an umbrella to keep the sun off me. There have been times where I've been in a really hot line that's in full sun, and if I can pull out a little tiny umbrella and open it up, it makes a huge difference. Also, make sure you're wearing comfortable walking shoes and you need to apply sunscreen. Like, generously apply sunscreen. Don't forget your part in your hair. I always do, and then I get sunburned right in my part. But sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. It's important even when you're not in the parks. I'm a huge, huge sunscreen advocate. So wear sunscreen in the parks. Also, you need to stay hydrated. Carrying a water bottle is very helpful. Hydration is critical to beating the summer heat, especially at Disneyland. So you can carry a refillable water bottle with you. They have numerous drinking fountains and little water bottle filling stations to help you stay hydrated. You can also, I mean, purchase cold beverages everywhere you go. Like they have carts and, you know, at the quick service restaurants, you can purchase cold beverages. You can also get free ice water from any quick service dining location. So Anytime I'm at a quick service and it's hot, I always just ask for a free cup of ice water. They usually have them there ready to go when it's hot, so they just hand them to you real quick. It's a nice way to get a little extra water, and then I'll take the ice and add it to my water bottle. You should be doing your best to utilize air-conditioned attractions and shows when it's at the peak of the day. So Disneyland has lots of air-conditioned attractions, where you can kind of hide out from the heat. So I like to sometimes save those for the hottest time of the day. Popular attractions like Pirates of the Caribbean, Haunted Mansion, It's a Small World, the Tiki Room, things like that where you can take a break from the sun and they're longer attractions is a great idea. Or like Mickey's Philhar Magic over in California Adventure. There's also the animation building where they have Turtle Talk with Crush. And you can meet Elsa and Anna and Beast Library and all those things. Those are great things to do in the middle of the day when you know you're going to be hot. And then you can take a little break. Speaking of taking a little break, taking a midday break when it's hot and crowded in the summer is a great idea. I am not a huge fan of leaving the park for breaks unless it's summer and super, super hot. So I always recommend people just stay in the parks and take a break while they're in the parks. I mean, they, you know, you could like see a show or you could ride the train around a few times or go to Tom Sawyer's Island for a bit. Whatever you want to do to kind of have some downtime is always a good idea. I always recommend that. But if you are there and it's super hot and super crowded, sometimes leaving the park in the middle of the day for a few hours is the best thing you can do. You can go back to your hotel and you can swim and you could take a little nap. Just enjoy the air conditioning for a while. Maybe you're super sweaty and you want to shower. All those things are great ideas. Then you can head back to the parks when it's cooling down and the sun's going down. It's getting to be less hot and less crowded because all those people who stuck it out all day with their little kids, their kids are losing it, falling apart, they're leaving, and you can head back in, stay later because you had a nap, and enjoy the cooler weather. And once that sun goes down, it's so nice. So I like to take a midday break in the summer. That might be a good option for you. You can also bring a fan and cooling towels. They make a huge difference. I really drug my feet on bringing a fan to the parks because I didn't think it would make that big of a difference to have this little tiny fan blowing on me. I was so wrong. It makes a huge, huge difference. I've also seen people bring like these, they're not paper fans, but they kind of look like it. Those fans that you just pull out and unfold and you fan yourself with them. Those 
move a lot of air and they don't take up a lot of space and you don't have to recharge them. So that might be a good option too, but those fans are a great way to make yourself feel cooler. Cooling towels are also a really great option. You can just get them wet in the bathroom. I always just throw mine, I get mine wet in the hotel, put them in like a gallon size Ziploc bag, put them on my backpack so when we need them, they're already ready to go. You wrap them around your neck. They're supposed to go around like your carotid artery. Is that what it's called? I think so. Anyway, it's supposed to help and it really does. And somehow these towels are magic. Like they don't get your shirt wet, they don't get my hair wet, but they really cool you down significantly. And once they start to dry out, you can just get them wet in the bathroom again, or if you're done with them, you just throw them back in your Ziploc bag. I love them because they're washable. So I just bring mine home, throw them in the washing machine, and then they're ready to go for my next visit. So they do sell these in the parks when it's really hot, but they're expensive. You can totally get fans and cooling towels on Amazon. I would do that before you go. All right, how do we beat the crowds? Number one, number one, number one. You probably know what I'm gonna say. I feel like I talk about this all the time. Arrive early. To make the most of your visit to Disneyland in the summer, one of the best strategies is to arrive early. By getting a head start on the day, you maximize your time in the park, you get shorter wait times, which is amazing, and you're you're like beating the heat too. You're not just beating the crowds, you're beating the heat. So the longer you can be there in the morning before it gets hot, the better. This is called rope dropping. That just means you're getting there to Disneyland before everyone else and you're able to get on all the attractions with a super, super short wait time in the summer. So this means you'll need to arrive at the gates about 45 to 60 minutes early because Disneyland opens the gates 30 minutes before the park officially opens. So by getting there early, you'll be able to get a bunch of rides done when it's not hot and the crowds are low. This is huge, huge, huge in the summer. So I have a video all about rope dropping on YouTube. It's definitely worth watching. I talk about what you should not rope drop because that's important. What you should rope drop, I will put a link to that in the show description so you can check that out. But make sure you watch that before you visit if you're new to rope dropping. Next is use Genie Plus. When visiting Disneyland in the summer, using Genie Plus can be a game changer. I know it's an extra cost, but when it's extra crowded, it might just be worth it for your family. If it's too much, it's fine. You're going to be okay but I would make sure you rope drop, 100% rope drop, and then be strategic about what rides you choose to go on first. But if you have Genie Plus, it's a great way to maximize your time. You can skip the standby lines for select attractions, and then you get to enter through the lightning lane, which is shorter than the standby line. So if you're going to use Genie Plus, though, you have to use it efficiently and effectively. I get messages from people all the time who said, I purchased Genie Plus, but then they didn't understand how to use it, and it was just a big, huge waste of money for them. So please, please, I hate it when people pay full price for things, and I hate it when people waste their money. Do not waste your money. If you're going to use Genie Plus, just put in a tiny bit of time to figure out how it works and how to use it effectively, and it will be your very best friend. I've got a whole podcast episode about using Genie Plus and strategies. Totally worth a listen. I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well, or you can just go back a few episodes and find it. Okay, whether or not you're using Genie Plus or not, you're going to want to take a strategic approach to rides and attractions. So when you're visiting Disneyland in the summer, how you make use of your ride time is important. Start with the most popular attractions, but start with the ones that are going to be hot later in the day. Then we're going to have like the longer outside lines that you know you're going to want to wait in, but you're not going to want to wait in the heat, if that makes sense. So save things like Pirates of the Caribbean and Haunted Mansion and those inside ones for later in the day and do some of the other rides that have the outside you know, that are outside or have outside lines 
earlier in the day when it's cooler. Uh, like Indiana Jones, that one is mostly inside. So that would be a great one to save for a little later in the day. Um, let's see, we, we already talked about, I'm not going to go into what not to rope drop and those kinds of things. It will take too long. You can watch my video. I'll put that in the show notes. But make sure you're also utilizing Disneyland's mobile app for wait times. It's too hot to bounce all the way across the park only to find out that the ride you were heading to is closed. So check the mobile app. Wait times aren't always accurate, but it gives you a, an idea. And you can also use the mobile app for, for mobile ordering food, which is going to be huge. So keep an eye on the mobile app. Before you jump over to the other side of the park for a ride, check the mobile app first. Take breaks. We already talked about taking breaks, how important it is, but I want to say it one more time. Take a break, whether that means you are hanging out in a quiet area of the park or just sitting in a shady spot with a cold drink or watching a show, going back to your hotel, whatever it is, take a break in some way or form, get hydrated. It's going to be so important for you when you're visiting during the summer. Another thing you can do is enjoy the water attraction. I say water attraction because this summer there is only one because now Splash Mountain is closed. So we've only got Grizzly River Run. This is a great time to take advantage of it in the summer though. Go on it a few times. You'll be drenched, but you'll be grateful because it's so hot. It does get long in the middle of the day because everyone wants to ride it. So it's a great time to use your Genie Plus. If you're one of those people like me, who doesn't want to get wet, even if it's hot, you can always bring a poncho. Although sometimes in the summer, I do embrace the water rides and just get wet. It depends on my shoes and my pants. I found these really great quick drying pants that I like to wear to Disneyland in the summer. because They dry so fast. And I also have these great sandals that I love to wear that are super supportive and then I don't worry about my feet. So often in the summer, I'll like embrace the fun of the water rides <laughs> and let loose a little bit and get wet. All right, so Disneyland in the summer is the very best after dark. As the sun sets, Disneyland is just a whole different park. There's a different vibe with the lights and the music. Different rides hit different when it's dark, but Disneyland's just so much fun after dark. And in the summer, when you've experienced the heat of the day and then nighttime is coming, that adds just an extra little like layer of amazingness because the heat is fading away quickly. They also have amazing entertainment at night that I always recommend. They've got the World of Color One over in California Adventure Park that's wonderful. Wondrous Journeys Fireworks Show is amazing. They usually have fireworks every night in the summer, but even if it's just the projections, it's still worth your time. Now, usually we have Fantasmic, but not this year. I mentioned last week that Fantasmic is not going to be opening until after Labor Day, so we have no Fantasmic happening, although Disney has said there will be other summertime evening entertainment. We haven't gotten any word about what that might be, but it's going to be great, I'm sure. So let's recap what I need you to do if you're visiting Disneyland during the summer. Plan ahead, choose the right dates, beat the heat, make sure you're like sunscreened and hydrated and all of that. Arrive early, that's huge. Use Genie Plus strategize your approach to rides, save some of those indoor rides for later in the day when it's super hot, take breaks, that's huge, 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 enjoy the water attraction, and enjoy that evening entertainment, that nighttime entertainment, so much fun. Summertime can really be a great time to visit, but I think it helps to know going into it that it's going to be hot and it's going to be crowded. So if you have a plan to deal with those two things and you have a good attitude, then you're going to have a great time. And actually just talking about this with you today has got me really excited for my summertime visits. It's going to be fun. 
Well, that is all I've got for you today. Don't forget to use my special code BDAY17 if you're visiting Disneyland this summer. Find a link to get away today in the show description. And also send me your Disney magical memories. I would love to share them on an upcoming episode. I hope you have a wonderful week. I will be back next week with something new. Thanks so much for listening. We'll talk soon.